Improving Cooling System Efficiency, Part 9, Water Treatment. Uh, water treatment programs are commonly used in cooling tower operations to minimize some of the problems that normally are encountered with uh, uh, most makeup water supplies. And these are uh, categorized as either scale deposits, corrosion, microbiological growth, and suspended solids fouling. Scale uh, refers to the mineral impurities that may concentrate and over concentrate to form scale in heat transfer areas like the chiller condenser. So one way to protect against that is to soften the makeup to remove calcium. And water treatment systems are readily available that uh, make use of traditional water softeners to remove the calcium from the makeup so it doesn't Im uh, impose a limiting factor on the operation of the cooling tower. In essence, that means you can run the tower at higher cycles of concentration without concern of scale deposition in the tower or in the heat exchangers. Another alternative that's been used for years is to feed mineral acid uh, to the makeup to reduce the alkalinity and adjust the pH. Uh, this also allows you to increase cycles of concentration, but it does tend to make the water a little more corrosive, uh, which is the other side of the coin here. Uh, we want to prevent scale, but we certainly don't want to uh, cause uh, excessive corrosion of system metals. So we have to strike a, a balance there between those two uh, goals. And uh, there are various chemicals that can also be used to increase the solubility of these sparingly soluble salts. I'll spare you the long chemical names uh, on these products, but uh, they're all sequestering agents, phosphonates that help uh, enhance the solubility of calcium carbonate and other uh, salts. Uh, to prevent their precipitation of scale. And uh, incorporated in, in a lot of the treatment formulations, we also add polymer dispersants, which help keep heat transfer surfaces clean and minim minimize the uh, settling out of insolubles in the low flow areas of the, of the cooling tower and the recirculating water system. Corrosion control is another concern. Uh, Corrosion is uh, simply a, a reaction between a metal and, and its environment. In this case, our environment is water. So we need to make sure that we've given this ad adequate consideration uh, to make the water as uh, less corrosive uh, with respect to common materials of construction like steel and copper and galvanized steel and stainless steel. So uh, various water treatment uh, additives are available that uh, will, will help minimize the corrosion of these uh, basic metals in uh, construction. Like with scale inhibition, uh, there are chemical additives that are commonly used as corrosion inhibitors. Uh, one that, that is uh, very easy to do and environmentally friendly is to operate the tower at higher pH and high alkalinity uh, using the natural alkalinity of the makeup and the natural pH of the makeup to make the water more alkaline and uh, less corrosive in the system. In uh, some cases, chemical additives like phosphates and zinc and molybdate and silicates, uh, organic additives like azoles are also used to uh, help protect against uh, excessive corrosion in, um, in the copper heat exchangers and steel pipe and galvanized steel cooling towers. So all of these products are available. They just need to be used judiciously. And uh, uh, we certainly don't want to over-treat the system with chemicals, but sometimes that's a, a good additive to, uh, to help protect the system. One way to measure our success in uh, corrosion control is to actually measure the corrosion rates. Uh, here's an example of an ASTM corrosion coupon rack. And uh, inserted inside the rack, we uh, will install corrosion coupons, which are small metal specimens, and uh, expose the, the coupon to the flow of water through the system. This, this would be a little loop of 
water flow from the condenser water system. And by we leave the coupons in place for uh, 90 days normally. And uh, then at the end of that test, we take the coupons out and uh, clean and reweigh them and uh, calculate their corro the corrosion rate in mills per year of metal loss. Here's just an example of uh, some of the various corrosion coupon specimens, uh, steel, copper, uh, galvanized steel, uh, brass. Uh, these little uh, specimens, again, are inserted in the coupon rack, exposed to the flow of water, and then removed for analysis at the end of the 90-day test. And once that test is completed, we can uh, compare the results to this uh, chart that, that suggests some of the, the uh, uh, results as expressed in mills per year in terms of very good, good, fair, poor, or very poor. So um, uh, it's, a, it's a good way to evaluate the performance of the system with regard to corrosion by actually being able to uh, quantify the corrosion rate that's in the system based on the type of metal that we're concerned with. So what do we need to know about water treatment? Um, first, we need to uh, arrive at an accurate, uh, reasonable uh, estimate for cycles of concentration uh, to, to make sure that we're operating the tower as efficiently as possible with regard to water consumption. And the cycle of concentration estimator tool that's in your toolkit is designed to help you uh, do that for your particular water quality. And we need to operate the cooling towers so that we prevent scale, corrosion, and microbiological uh, growth in the system. And we also need to review options for finding ways to improve the cooling tower makeup, perhaps by pretreating that water, to allow the tower to operate at higher cycles of concentration. Ten cycles of concentration is generally considered a um, reasonable target. So if your cooling tower is operating at less than 10 cycles, it's uh, worthwhile to reevaluate and see if there are various options that would allow you to achieve higher cycles of concentration for minimizing uh, uh, and ma and, uh, water consumption and maximizing cooling tower efficiency. 